Have you ever been on a drilling rig when the drilling line broke? The rig floor or derrick is no place to be when the line parts and the traveling block with the hook, elevators and pipes start falling and the end of the drilling line starts whipping. You wouldn't want to be in the way of this. This won't happen to you if you keep the drilling line and associated equipment in good condition. Drilling line seems simple enough. It's just a lifeless piece of wire rope. No bearings, gears, shafts, or motors. But wire rope is a working machine, exactly engineered with intricate moving parts. It's worth some care, or your life could be literally hanging by a thread. Your drilling line is made up of individual steel wires made up into six strands. The strands are laid around a wire rope core to make a complete wire rope. Even though you have procedures for routine replacement of your drilling line, it's important that you be able to recognize a damaged or badly worn line that should be replaced immediately. You should also know what causes these types of damage so you can prevent them from happening again. We ask the U.S. Steel to show us some typical drilling line problems. Okay, here we've got a dog leg which has permanently distorted or changed the line of the rope. Trying to run through a shiv, these outer crown wires here would be first to deteriorate because as it's running through the shiv, the knuckle would drag against the side of the shiv and wear these crown wires out. As you can see, it started in this one already by rubbing against the sides of the shiv in which this rope was designed to run. This is an obvious case of drum crush, where extreme pressures have been brought down on this particular wrap of rope by an additional wrap of rope above or below. This rope becomes unsafe immediately. You, the typical application is overwinding on the drum and then crossing the line. This sample showing heavy crown wear and peening and transverse wire breaks was caused by crossover at the drum return points where the bed layer has filled up. You have now approached the draw works drum flanges and the turn back has become effective then you have a scissoring effect where the next layer of rope crosses the bed layer and starts back across the drum this is caused caused by leaving the rope in position too long that is to say a cutoff practice would have possibly and in all probability have avoided this particular type of damage. Here we have a one and three eighths inch drill line sample that has heavy crown wear and transverse wire breaking. In all probability, this rope was run well beyond the limits of the ton miles with which it was designed to do. The wearing off of the crown wires through the shivs and over the winding drums has taken enough metal off to allow fatiguing to crack the wire, wires transversely. This is a 19 wire strand, one of six from a one inch drill line. You will notice that the ends of the wire show a necking down. That is the OD near the end of the part or tension break is lesser in diameter than back up 
well removed from the tension brake. When you detect tension brakes are necking down or bottling, bottlenecking of the wires at the end, most often it is due to overloading of the line, causing the necking down of the wires until they reach the point that the load exceeds the tension strength of the rope and the rope fails. These types of damage are caused by the equipment that handles the drilling line. So when we talk about drilling line maintenance, we're really talking about maintaining the deadline anchor, deadline stabilizer, crown, traveling block, wireline turnbacks, chronomatic, and draw works. We'll look at each of these in part two of this series. First, let's give some attention to the line. Because the wire rope is made up of many independent moving wires that rub against each other, the rope is lubricated at the factory. There was a time when drilling crews lubricated the drilling line to protect it and keep it loose. We seldom do this anymore. It's messy and time consuming. Keep the spool of drilling line covered and out of the weather and your line will probably last fine without lubrication. Of course, we strive to get the most use from a length of drilling line, but we can't always see evidence that a line needs replacing, and we sure don't want to wait until the line breaks before we replace it. To solve this problem, a slipping and cutoff program was developed. Based on experience and engineering recommendations, a tool pusher would keep records of the amount of work a drilling line had done. After a certain amount of work had been done, the crew would spool some new line off the supply reel, maybe 20 feet, and wind an extra 20 feet onto the draw works. In this way, the drilling line would be continually replaced. This was called slipping. And after every third or fourth slip, the old line at the draw works end would be cut off and thrown away. This was called cutoff. The reason for cutoff is to avoid accumulating too much line on the draw works. An excess of line causes spooling problems on the draw works that can damage the line. Slipping and cutoff programs are still carried out today, but SEDCO rigs try to minimize lost time by slipping more line less often and cutting it off each time. The line is still replaced before it's in danger of breaking. It's just not as gradual a process at SEDCO. The work done by a line is measured in ton miles. How many tons have been moved how many miles? If a rope moves one ton, a distance of one mile, that's a ton mile you'll have a certain number of ton miles between cutoffs determined by your rig management. But if visual inspection reveals damage, the line will have to be cut regardless of ton miles of service. Let's take a look at how we cut off a length of drilling line. Hang the traveling block on the hang line. The block is big and heavy, and you're hanging it over a lot of heads by one or two pieces of wire rope. Don't take chances. Be sure the line's breaking strength is safely far above the weight you hang on it. It should be secured at each end with at least four wire line clips. Remember, all clips should be attached with the U-bolts over the dead end of the line, like you see here. Okay, with the block on the hang line, Remove the line from the draw works drum. Use a bar to hammer the anchor wedge loose. Cut off the amount of line stipulated by your tool pusher. Don't use a hatchet on the line. Dangerous pieces of wire could fly into your face. Use a wire rope cutter and wear safety glasses. Now pull about 10 feet of the fast line through the anchor hole in the drum. Loop it around and back into the hole. Attach a hoist line or the cat line to the fast line. Now pull the line and insert the anchor wedge as the loop closes in. Spool the line tightly onto the drum. About 12 wraps with the traveling block at the pickup point. 
anchor the deadline, and you're back in business. There are three steps to maintaining a safe, reliable drilling line. Make them a part of your routine. The first step is a good cutoff program. By keeping accurate records, your rig can slip and cut the drilling line before it gets dangerously worn. The second step should be just as routine. This is visual inspection of the line. If you detect damage or excessive wear before cutoff is due, slip and cut the line right then. Visual inspection overrides the ton mile records when determining cutoff. Learn to recognize the types of wire rope damage and their causes. Dog legging, this is a kink. The line will no longer return to a normal straight line. It's caused by bending the line around something other than a shiv or some other careless handling. This will cause the line to wear out rapidly. Replace it before it has a chance to break. Drum crush, caused by extreme pressure at the crossover point. This could happen if you do a 10 line job when only eight lines are strung. Crossover wear, it occurs at the crossover point where one layer of line on the drawworks has filled the drum and the line starts toward the other side of the drum. Slip and cut the line before this wear becomes excessive. A few broken wires are okay, a lot are not. Normal wear, again, you can allow a few broken wires. The third step to dependable drilling line is equipment maintenance. Watch part two of the drilling line series where we'll cover the equipment that comes in contact with the drilling line from the deadline anchor to the chronomatic.